All right, it's 1030 and I'm headed to go get bait right now. I got a, at least an hour round trip to go get bait and then get back here. And then I got to go ahead and bait up. But since I'm going to be using the semi-automatic trout line baiting system, that'll be a breeze. I'm only going to go ahead and run 1,200 foot of line. You know, just messing around, see what happens. I mean, my theory is that we haven't had very much rain the last couple of days. Like, you know, the spots in the lane, there's no water in the freaking mud puddles. That's kind of like an indicator I use to see what kind of rain we've had. But, and it's been windy, so, and it's late in the year. I mean, right now, anyone can go out there and catch a freaking basket of crabs. All right, all I'm doing here is just baiting up. I'm just going to go ahead and show how I don't have to unbait on this trip, but of course, unbaiting, it's, you know, it's no different. All you do is just dump the clams out real quick. It takes freaking two seconds. It's so simple. Boom. Throw your clams in there. And if you're unbaiting, of course, you would just unzip it. And then, you know, it's just, it's so simple. It's so quick. I mean, it's really a game changer. And all the information to get the zip bags or the machine or the table or whatever you need. I mean, I got these for sale too. I sell these at cost. I just do a little bit of modification to them. It's all in the description, so check that out if you're interested in getting any of this stuff. All right, it's 11.45, and I got this line all baited up, and I'm getting ready to load her up and uh, go ahead and see what happens here. All right, it's before 12, and I've got everything ready. I had to go get bait. You know, I started all this at like 10.30 this morning, and it's noon now, and I'm ready to roll to land. All right, so it's 1.30 now, and just on a whim, just to see what would happen, because I've had luck way up at the heads of this creek before. I went ahead and tried up in there, and I didn't see a crab. So I went ahead and laid that, you know, pulled it all up, came out here, and it's only 1.30. So I went ahead and I laid right at the head of the island, kind of an old go-to spot that I remember. There was, a, you know, a lot of spots, the decent spots that I remember, they were all taken. This spot was open, more or less. So I went ahead and laid it out and ran it real quick and got three number one crabs on the first run which i guess for 130 and tide should be out going now just starting to head out it was just high tide so i don't know i don't know if that's real good or not i was kind of expecting to knock the crap out of them way up at the head of that creek but it, didn't, it just didn't play out like that you know the water just it done got enough salt up in there or something you know it's just, they're not up in there like i thought they would be or they were up in there and they left i don't know but a lot of times you will get a good hit right at the heads of these rivers you know in the fall time or right before the fall time so go ahead and i'm actually gonna let it soak for a second this time then run it and see if it produces any better I've done too much better than that i mean i want to see like a dozen of runs kind of what i was expecting if i don't see that then i'm gonna go ahead and since i'm only running 1200 foot i can go ahead and pick it up and keep heading out the river until i finally find a couple all right, I'm going to go ahead and film this run. I'm in about eight foot, and I got each end going over that sandbar. And the ends are doing a little bit better is what it's looking like on that first run. So I'm going to go ahead and film this run and see, you know, hopefully it picks up a little bit. And that tide's starting to go out, goes ahead and starts putting a couple on this line.
<laughs> on the snag. That should have popped me off that snag.
All right, so as you can see there, there's a freaking snag, like right where the crabs are. <laughs> so I went ahead and I ran it this way. I tried to pop off the snag, as you can see in the video. It didn't come off this time, it did last time. So what I did is I kicked off it and went ahead to the other end and just ran it back to the snag. And I guess I'll just go ahead and keep on doing that because it wasn't too horrible. That run got a dozen and got the dozen I was looking for. So go ahead and call these out. It's probably two small ones. So go ahead and call these out and you know, I guess just hope it kicks off that snag and stays off it. If not, just have to kick off it and run to the other end and run to the snag. All right, this is kind of like a Y River benchmark crab. It's a freaking male, but its points are crazy long. I mean, this son of a gun, it's about, it's almost eight and a half. That thing, really big. It's just got those real long points on it. All right, that one, I caught six keepers, which is not what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it this time. If it doesn't hit, if I don't catch 10, keepers on this one then I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up and move it over there right on those rocks just call that the black sheep lay there was a guy that was over there some traps it didn't look like he had them quite right so hopefully I don't know maybe he bushled out I don't know but I'm gonna go ahead and lay that if this doesn't catch 10 keepers on this run. Alright well I got 10 on that one but to be honest I'm just tired of dealing with this snag so I'm gonna go ahead and yank this thing on up. I wanna try some more different went ahead and laid it right there I'm not real happy with the way I laid it I should have went ahead and sounded a little bit more and rode around and figured it out a little bit better but I just kind of went with thinking that I remembered how to do it maybe I did it right <laughs> it just didn't feel quite right so we'll see once I run her a couple times but it seems to me like it's a little bit too shallow you know I might be wrong it might be good so go ahead and let it sit for a second I still gotta call out all these guys got another way over eight inch right there and they're all pretty nice and hard too i was expecting to catch more uh calls and you know for them to be a little bit lighter but they're they're hardened up pretty good so i'm pretty happy with that so i'm gonna go ahead and call these out and i mean i'm coming up on half a basket and having moved as many times as i moved and coming out late and i mean it's not it's not too bad like if you were to really try this like for real instead of just messing around like me like it's definitely on fire out here in the wire right now definitely I was trying to hit this bar right here. I remember that being kind of a hot spot. And I just got this in way too freaking shallow. So I don't, I'm pretty sure it's a pretty good hard bottom here and that there's not a bunch of snags. So I'm going to go ahead and just dragging this end out this way. Because, you know, I haven't freaking crapped here. And, you know, it's been a really long time. So I was trying to figure it out. They're hitting between about six and 10 foot is what I'm seeing. And there's too much of this in like three foot. So I'm just slowly dragging it, dragging this end out this way. Try to get the whole thing in about six to 10 foot. And while I'm dragging it, I ran it, you know, I laid it and ran it pretty quick and got six good keepers. So, you know, not too bad. Just gotta, just gotta adjust it a little bit. Hopefully get a dozen per run is what I'm looking for. Like quick, like, run it and then hurry up and get to the other end run again 12 each time I'm looking for. And that's another reason i like this roller like this i use this two by four part right here as a tool i mean all the freaking time i mean they're just i, I couldn't even imagine not having that thing there it's it's incredible as a tool another one well over eight this is probably the third or fourth one it's been well over eight and then
All right, it's three o'clock and I ended up with just under two baskets. It's really freaking close. I got all the line, the boat and everything. And yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and throw these back. That should be pretty interesting to watch. So stay tuned. All right, I went ahead and released both bushels and some of them are just kind of like hanging out. I guess they're kind of freaked out because I don't know. <laughs> but they're not like scurrying off real quick. I kind of thought they'd scurry off a little bit quicker than they did. I hurry up and dump both baskets and some of them are kind of still lethargic and hanging out and going the wrong way and stuff so and be sure to go ahead and check out the link in the description to see how to get the semi-automatic trot line baiting system and zip bags and all that fun stuff and as usual thanks for watching don't forget to like comment share and subscribe